Let's revisit Stokes' theorem. Uh, recall that what you have is a vector field capital F and the integral, the line integral over that over some curve called C dot dr is, uh, this is what Stokes' theorem says, that that should be the same as the surface integral, so an integral over surface of what? Of take that vector field and take the curl of that vector field, which is itself a new vector field, and then dot that with n, that this vector, really, really rather vector function, is the orientation of the surface. You need a um, a surface that's orientable, right? So let's just comment here, reminder here that this is the orientation of S. So in a nutshell, this is what uh, Stokes' theorem says. This side on the right, uh, a book, the book way of writing this is the double integral over S of the curl of F, again, that part being the same, and then the dot and this N DS that follows at the end there, the book version is to write D and then just a bold S, which, well, we have no good way to do that other than draw this arrow here. Um, one comment that's in order is that the C is the boundary of S. And the thing is, C has an orientation, right? So it's, you know, the starting point and ending point, and the, then you have to travel from start to end, and so that's a certain direction you travel. And then, um, the surface also needs to be oriented or orientable. And the thing about the orientation here and the orientation there is that the orientation must be compatible. So uh, sometimes the kind of language that's used is a positive orientation, but we'll just go with the orientation must be positive, uh, must be compatible. So C has an orientation, S has an orientation, they have to work with each other. Let's take a look at some examples of what that means. And specifically, let's look at more advanced examples than we've looked at before. Again, for the moment, we're only going to concern ourselves with surfaces that are orientable, and that has nothing to do with the number of holes in the object. So for instance, there's a surface here, I just took a sheet of paper and you know taped it without any twist. This has a hole in it, right? Uh, here's the surface. This is the Mobius strip. It's just taped together with a single twist. It's just a twist of 180 degrees, and this has a hole in it. Now these both have holes, but the Mobius strip is not orientable. We and we will not be talking about that while talking about Stokes theorem. That kind of surface just isn't part of. We can't even talk about it for Stokes theorem. This is orientable even though it has a hole in it. Now the specific. Uh, surface I'd like to talk about that is orientable is let's take a shirt. Yeah, take a t-shirt and um, this is orientable. There's an outside of the shirt and there's an inside of the shirt. When you end up wearing a shirt, you know, people don't see, uh, people see just one side of the shirt, right? Even from the back, this is all the outside. And um, with the shirt, there's a, if we orient this out outward, now there is an inward orientation, but for this arrow that I have, it's just kind of impractical to to show on the inside of it. And actually, uh, you know what, the color scheme is a little dark, so I'm just going to go with the uh, shirt that I'm wearing. Hope that works. So again, there's there's an inside orientation and an outside orientation. And so take this arrow. If the arrow is pointing at you, then the the orientation for the curve, for the, for the, for the boundary, which is a curve, you'll notice that this arrow down here, let me, how do I do this, do this so that it's, it's not, in, in, okay, I think you can see now that that arrow, so when, when, when the orientation of the surface is pointing towards you, then the arrow that you see here is traveling counterclockwise, and that will be the orientation of the curve, the boundary. Um, if, on the other hand, I have the arrow pointing away from you, now, if as I'm looking at it, now I see a counterclockwise orientation there. You would see the wrong one. You'd see the, the clockwise one. So let's go with, you know, pointing at you. So this is the outward orientation. And what I'll do is, you know, there's this, the, the, the neckline here is one of the four boundary circles. And let me just take this thingy here and just uh, kind of put it kind of close to where, where, where that is, right? And then uh, I'll just rotate this around just so that you can, aha. So now you see kind of like with the arrowhead, you see that the orientation along the circle should be that way. So we should travel like along this way, and I gotta get my hand out of the way, travel like this way around and then come back around like this, right? So that'd be for that. And what I'd like to do is actually draw this or attempt to draw this um, while I have a split screen scenario here. So this is my attempt at drawing a t-shirt. 
Um, there's that circle there for one arm. There's a circle here. Okay, so I mean for like this to be the front of the shirt. Okay, this is the front half of the shirt. This is, of course, the front. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> I hope this is kind of clear. And then here, the drawing, I don't mean, I hope I'm, I'm clear that that's the front. The part that I just drew. Let me maybe thicken, thicken it. That'll like, and then this is the back. So is the, the, there's a circle at the bottom, um, and then the the thing to do really is if we orient this outward. Well, then again, take a look. This arrow is pointing at you, and okay, it should be perpendicular. You know, it should be normal. But if if I do that, I'm gonna just hold this over here. You really can't see what's going on when this is perpendicular because I'm kind of tilt. My, I'm tilted to look up at. So let me just. I'm gonna just move the. I'm going to just point this down a little bit. So the angle's not quite the 90 degree angle it should be, but close enough, right? So that you can see what's going on. So you see this counterclockwise uh, arrow, yeah? And I am going to draw that just in a new color in a couple places, like, you know, right there. So that circular arrow that's on the suction cup, I'm just trying to draw that in a couple places, okay? Um, so, you know, wherever it is, like, you know, over here, here over there. And then, um, based on that, now we could even also, of course, rotate the picture of this just as is convenient. So a lot of these shapes that I've drawn here look just like kind of U's, but I, if, if I need to, just for convenience, I might rotate. So this one I might have there, you know, like this one. I Based on just whatever you need for convenience, oh, let's, let's try this again. Um, let me, in fact, rotate that, I think, with that one that's just drawn, it'll be a lot easier to point out, hey, this, we need to orient the boundary circle here this way, okay? And then based on, well, so based on the arrow that's there, we should orient like this. And then, um, oh, let's draw another one of these uh, counterclockwise circle thingies kind of nearby that sleeve. And we'll see an orientation that should go that way. And then for the bottom, well, there's that. that that's already helpful, you know. And then we'll go like that. OK, so you'll see that the orientation of the circle at the top and the orientation of the circle at the bottom, they're actually uh, in reverse of each other. I, I, I sort of hesitate here to use language like clockwise versus counterclockwise on the shirt itself, because it kind of depends on where you're looking from. All right, um, let's look at another example. Uh, how about like just a sheet of paper? I just have this sheet of paper and I cut out a hole from it. And we do the same thing. We can hold up this arrow, you know, so we're, let's, okay, there's the orientation that's this way and that way. So let's just orient towards you. That's the reference, right? To have it oriented towards you. And if I rotate, sorry, I wish I had another hand to do this, but if I rotate it like that, I hope you can see that the direction of the arrow points is this way. And if you travel along this way, let me make sure I'm saying this right, it should be counterclockwise to you. Yeah, right now for me, I'm on the other side of the paper. This seems clockwise to me, okay? But this this motion that, I, that as I'm tracing around here should be counterclockwise to you. But then if we look at the circle on the inside, right? So then, you know, let's kind of move the, rotate this just enough so that we can see then now the arrow points, I believe, that way, yeah? And so this, mo oh, I got to be careful to not actually get a paper cut on the boundary. Okay, but this here, this motion this way, should at least to you look clockwise. And there are no shenanigans. I've checked that the video isn't flipped accidentally or anything like that to you. So let me try to draw that, okay? So I'm saying that there is, you know, the surface that's just, you know, a sheet of paper or a towel with a hole cut out in the middle. Then the so we're, the surface itself is this shaded blue part, yeah? And then, you know, throughout here, we can draw in this, these orientation circular arrows that all should look counterclockwise, at least if this sheet is oriented towards you. So like this point on the sheet, I just drew in a big red dot. Imagine that this arrow is pointing, you know, out from the screen. So, you know, your screen became 3D, surprise, right? Like there's an arrow that is right at, that spot, but it's not pointing like downward on the screen. It's like literally pointing towards you, the viewer. Your screen has popped into 3D. And so you see, you'd see this arrow around it. And so based on just drawing that arrow in a useful way, we see that the orientation around the outside, the, the, the boundary consisting of the four 
line segments on the outside should be counterclockwise. But if we take that same orientation arrow and just draw it closer to this inner circle, we see that you're going to have to travel along the circle this way for agreement. Yeah, so you'll have to go that way. Is that clear? Let me actually just draw this using the thicker red pen. Okay, so so this this drawing of an arrow is in the same direction, yeah, as as these circular arrows being drawn. And then on the outside, oh, I didn't even draw the this boundary on the outside there. And actually, I hope that what this does, to be honest, is that it ought to make a little more sense of recall that in the past uh, we had looked at um, the boundary of uh, back when we were looking at Green's theorem, we had the situation of an annulus. So that was the the filled in region between two circles. Yeah. And you may recall it seeming confusing that the outside circle was oriented counterclockwise, but the inside circle was oriented clockwise. Well, now what you can imagine, even though this was an example that was in the plane, just two dimensional, you could still just imagine that at each point, in here, like that point there, there's a, let's just pretend it's 3D now. The z-axis is uh, hidden just at that one point at the origin. The z-axis is pointing towards you. And so this, at this point here, you imagine an arrow pointing towards you. And when the arrow is pointing towards you, you have this counterclockwise look, right? Like you've got, uh, what I'm saying is, let me just, let's try it this way, that uh, this, this is attached in, in exactly the direction you see it right now um, on 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 that blue point yeah so we'll go back to this view sorry for the switch of views here um, and so that's why uh, well I think it's helpful to draw this twice you know that that around the outside here you see that counterclockwise you see how that matches the suggested direction by that circular blue arrow and then for the inside you'd have to travel this way to get matching direction there.